gonna get mad. It's that time of year. It's wedding season, and you may have received an invitation or two recently. But you really have to go, or how much should you be spending on that wedding gift? So here with Wedding Do's and Don'ts is etiquette expert Ellen Erickson. She's been here, and she's back one more time, because we were thinking with all these weddings that are going on, you're going to have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions, so welcome back. Thank you for having me, Sylvia. Okay, so you're already getting some invitations. You get the first one in the mail. How quickly do you actually need to RSVP to that invitation? You should RSVP right away. Open it up. Fill out the reply card and mail it the next morning. Because, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, don't, you don't need to RSVP for another month. And some of us kind of hem and haw and we wait and then you forget, don't you? You forget. You look unresponsive, ungrateful for the invitation. And it's just really considerate to the people who are hosting the wedding. Now, for here's, a, here's a tri tricky question. You get the invitation, mm -hmm. but it just has your name on it. So should you ask if your significant other can come with you if the name was not on the invitation? So this is a tricky question. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, serious partners and fiancés are invited. If, in fact, you, your name is the only one on it, you can reach out to the bride and ask if you can bring your partner. But I will caveat that okay. and say, use your own discretion. If you know that the bride and groom went through the list with a fine-tooth comb and they've got a really tight budget, or your partner is not really well liked by the couple, I would refrain from asking. But if it's not on the invitation, that's the trick. Because I think right. people think about who they're inviting when they put the names. Maybe it's so-and-so and a guest. Yes. Um, but you said if you feel comfortable, just ask. Yes, yes. If it's a serious enough significant other, you can ask. Okay, so here's the other big question. What do you wear? Can you wear white, first of all? Let's start with that. So it kind of, I would say no, just okay. because it, you're kind of taking the thunder away from the bride. So I look at two things when wondering what to wear. One is the invitation. Does it state a dress code? Is it white tie? Is it black tie? Is it semi-formal? It will typically say. If mm -hmm. it does not, you look at the time of day. Okay. Typically, a daytime wedding is a little bit more casual. A nice sundress, flats, heels for a woman is sufficient. For a man, nice pants, a nice top is great. Uh, evening weddings are dressier. So a cocktail dress for a woman, a suit for a man is appropriate. Okay, so time of day is key. Yeah. Also, so when you're giving a gift, mm -hmm. first of all, how much is, is an adequate amount to spend? I mean, do you feel like you have to spend a certain amount? Or how do you look at that when you gift give? There really isn't a correct or incorrect amount of money to spend. Typically, what I like to tell people when it comes to any type of gift giving, if it is thoughtful and specific to the recipient, it's a nice gift. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about the money. Think about the recipient. Okay, so you've been invited to the shower mm -hmm. also. You go to the shower, you give them a gift. Do you also buy them a gift for the wedding? And if so, do you bring it with you to the wedding? Okay. Uh, yes. So if, you, if you're invited to the shower and the wedding, they're two different occasions, so two different gifts. They're, they're different, and they represent different things. The shower is less elaborate and specific to the bride or couple if it's a couple's shower. And okay. a, a wedding is something more decorative for the home. And you typically would mail it ahead of time to their home, the bride's home or the couple's home. So don't bring it with you to the wedding if you can avoid it, right? Because right. that's something else that they have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the next question. A lot of these weddings these days, they last all day long. And sometimes there's a huge gap in between. Yes. And, you know, you've got things to do on a Saturday or whatever. Is it rude to just show up for the reception and not for the wedding? This is kind of a tricky question, too. It's kind of one of those questions, if you ask, you kind of know maybe you should be going to both. So mm -hmm. I would suggest that it's really meaningful for the people who are putting on the wedding and the couple that you're there for the whole thing, and they want to share with you the entirety of the day. So clear your calendar and enjoy the festivities. It's just one day, right? Just one day. Okay, now if you would like a recap of all of Ellen's advice and a few other wedding do's and don'ts, like whether you should feel pressured to spend money to attend an out-of-town wedding, you can go to our website, abc7chicago.com. Thanks for joining us today. Always good to have you.